Hey, hi, welcome, Kevin here. I bet you, you clicked on this because, well, I'm hoping that the thumbnail aroused your curiosity and you're curious about who should be on a health and safety committee. Or maybe you've been tasked with putting together a health and safety committee or reviving an existing one, and you wanna know things like how big it should be, or maybe you're hoping to find the right model. Either way, I'm glad you're here. Now, this video is basically a best practice approach to assembling a health and safety committee and putting one together. You might already have stipulations within your local occupational health and safety legislation about the size and composition of a joint occupational health and safety committee. But either way, let's take a deeper dive. Now, I'm going to ask you to do one thing, though. Stick with me to the end because I'm going to have some bigger pitfalls that you might want to avoid. The question first off is, Who's on the committee? As I've said, local legislation will likely have some stipulations about who's supposed to be on your health and safety committee by way of workers, workforce and management. Realistically, one thing that most legislation has in common is they say that there has to be equal numbers of managers and workers. Now, in fact, you want to keep that balance. In fact, most jurisdictions go forward and they say that if there's an overbalance, it has to be on the worker's side or the worker's side versus management. So if you're sitting on a teeter-totter, the workers should be holding the management up in the air. So basically, if you think about that way, realistically, if having a good workforce complement on your health and safety committee, they actually hold the, work, the management force up. Just a thought. So now the next question is, who from management should be on the health and safety committee? One thing, above all, avoid the notion of a rite of passage. It's the new guy or new gal's job. Two real quick reasons why you don't want to do that. Number one is they don't know enough about you and you don't know enough about them. So you might want to consider this. Nobody should be on your health and safety committee while they're still serving their probationary period. So we've talked about not having the new people on the health and safety committee for good reason. You also want to look to recruit managers that consider themselves part of the team. So have them be the quarterback, not necessarily the manager, okay? Ideally, they should be want to be part of the team, not steering the team necessarily. You also want to avoid that those that look at health and safety and safety teams as a necessary evil because they're going to bring that same set of emotions and that same outlook to the health and safety committee. Now, the other thing is you don't want to force anybody to be there that doesn't want to be there. Now, maybe you might not have enough management force and you're going to have to select managers to be on there. But maybe what you need to do is make some sort of an enticement a necessary part. Say, for instance, that you're going to make it a rotating position among the management and each manager will serve a six month or a one year term. I wouldn't make it any shorter than that because you know what? It's not going to give them enough traction to get anything done. It likely would be a detriment to your committee. Okay, so how about the workforce? Who's from the workforce? Well, you know something? That actually might be out of your control. Okay, that, that's just the truth. It might be out of your control. For instance, if there's a union, a lot of collective agreements will stipulate that the union appoints all of the union representation on the health and safety committee. Now, this doesn't mean you can't make suggestions. If you have a good working relationship between the management and the union, this shouldn't be a stretch. And in fact, you should always be working to a good, healthy relationship between management and the union workforce all t at all times. Well, that just makes sense. It just promotes a good health and safety culture and a good safety environment. That does make sense. Now, the other thing is a lot of legislation stipulates that the workforce has to elect or appoint their representation. So if you don't have union membership, it's a good possibility that you may be required to have elections for your workforce health and safety committee membership. Either way, the idea is you still want to have the same process. You would like to have people that are enthusiastic, outside of the box thinkers and innovators rather than the alternative. But once again, don't force anybody to be on the committee. You might have to, just like I said with management, make it a rotating process. And one final thing, and this goes for both management and the workforce, avoid those that are just trying to avoid their own work. A lot of times you'll have people that really struggle to do their own job and if they have an opportunity to get onto a committee that gives them some escapism from their job and you know what they'll likely transfer that same work ethic to the committee 
you might want to avoid that. How big do you have uh, someone representing every department? You know what? There's no magic formula for the composition of a health and safety committee other than what's stipulated in your legislation. You're going to have to consider some of the following. Number one, what's your situation? What's your jurisdiction say for minimum numbers? Usually a common number is four. Okay, so now let's look at this. You want to have good cross-sectional representation. What if you have lots of departments and sections? You want to avoid making it too big. Representation from each might be counterproductive, especially if you want to operate with a consensus decision-making model. More about that on an upcoming video. So you want to consider cross-sections of representation. For example, someone that represents uh, different sections that have very close and similar duties uh, and I'm talking about duties where uh, they have similar hazards and similar complexities. So a good example might be the admin staff and sales staff. Or other examples might be warehouse and maintenance staff. You might want to be able to get someone that will represent both of those. So it gives you a good cross-sectional representation in both the management and workforce. And the hazards and complexities of their jobs are also represented fairly well within the health and safety committee. One final thing that you want to consider is when you have a committee making it that right size, if it's too big, it's going to lose that agility. Think about trying to steer a semi truck in a tight parking lot. Or if it's too small, you're going to lack that full representation and it might consider be considered exclusivity. So you want to make sure that you have it inclusive of your generalized workplace and at the same time, not so big that you, it's going to take you forever to make a decision. Finally, let's take a quick step back. One thing that you want to absolutely be assured of is your committee well represented gender wise. So you want to make sure that the male and female complement to your health and safety committee is also fairly equal wherever you can. So to put it in short is uh, the considerations are what is your local OHS legislation say for starters? Then what do you have for existing company policy? What does the union involvement look like? You want to ensure that good balance of workers and management and always making sure that if there's an overbalance, it's on the worker side versus management. The other thing is, is it staffed and composed of both workers and management that have an enthusiasm for workplace safety and that they're th innovators and out of the box thinkers. Also, you want to consider that good cross section of employees taking into account things like the duties that are associated with the job, along with those associated hazards, job complexities, and of course, good representation of both male and female workers. Hey, and I promised you I was going to talk about things you should avoid. Now, I already talked about having new personnel on the committee, being mindful of those that wanted to escape work and didn't think much of health and safety, but there's a couple of other things that you might want to consider. You might want to avoid additional compensation for being on the committee. You know, things like uh, additional pay for being on the committee. Think about the Hawthorne effect. Basically, it says that the incentive usually only produces short term effects and may, in fact, have some detrimental effect on your having an effective health and safety committee. You also want to avoid other deals like having additional time off or additional holiday pay or whatever the case may be above the current employment agreements because it could also have a detriment to your committee. And above all and beyond all, you want to avoid incentives that separate and divide. I'm talking about like perks for management versus perks for the worker committees because you know what? People talk. I'm not saying that uh, appreciation perks like pizza or lunch or something like that can't be done. You just want to avoid making deals just to staff and complement what should be a necessary and integral part of your health and safety program. Because realistically, as I've said before, health and safety committee is essential to having a healthy health and safety culture and having a successful and sustainable health and safety program. So thanks. Thanks for hanging out to the very end. Do me a favor. If you like the video, let me know. If you didn't like it or you have additional thoughts, leave me a comment. I appreciate all of the interaction. If you haven't done so already, you might want to subscribe because and, and ding that bell because you know what? You get notified when new content gets put up and you won't miss a live stream. Do me a favor until we see each other again. And I really hope we do. Don't just think about safety. Don't just talk about safety, but lead by example, provoke safety. Wherever you end up, do safety. Take care. Bye for now.